to give encouragement, support. I appreciate you. That way, he can do better. So for wives, if you appreciate your husband, then he can do better. Okay? Now for women in a marriage, to pay attention to what? Give men enough space and his privacy. Because men like to have his private time. And when he's emotional and happy, you ask him, he doesn't want to talk about it, let him, leave him alone. And you can say, when you want to, you can share with me. I love to hear from you, but leave him alone. And it doesn't matter if you don't know all the things about him. But now, wives usually care, so want to know what is happening. And it's good for husbands to share, but generally, husbands are slow to share. And my wife told me, she like to have a marriage that will share about big things and small things. But let me tell you, honestly, I have problem sharing about things I did wrong. I have problem sharing about or difficulties. But I learned to do it more. I learned to do it more because it's hard for a man to share that. It's hard to, because it could make her worry. For instance, if I have any sickness, I try to take care of it. If I cannot take care of it, then I tell her. Because once she knows about it, she will be very, uh, she would do everything she can do and she will remind me how to take care of myself. So sometimes I don't want her to overreact. So there's a tendency like that, but still, because what we said, I try to tell her as much as possible. And so if husbands do that, the wives will be very happy. And then, don't force him to give up what he likes. For instance, some husband like to play certain sports or do something he likes to do, don't force him to change. Don't force him to be totally devoted to the, to the family only and nothing to himself. If he likes something, let him do it. For instance, I like tennis. Now, but the problem is, on the weekdays, my wife works. On the weekdays, I have more time. Now, actually, I'm very busy, I'm very busy. But then I can play tennis. On Saturday, in the place where I live, there is a tennis club, and then I can play there. But she told me, you know, Saturday is the day, because Sunday we're all full. Saturday is the day that she likes time with me. So if I play tennis, then it will lose the time with me. So I try to avoid playing tennis on Saturday, except when she is too busy herself. She has to do a lot of things. She doesn't want to go out. If she wants to go out, I will go out with her on Saturday. So, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That I will give time to her. And, but she won't force me to give up tennis. She won't force me. She will give me the space. And when I ask her, if we're not doing anything, I ask her, uh, can I go play tennis? She will say, okay, go do it. So I'm very thankful for that. Some wives will say, you spend too much time outside. I don't want you to go outside. You stay at home. Women like the children and the husband to stay at home more. When I was young, my family members always want us to stay home because they feel more secure when we all stay home. And then we can do things. But we want to give people space. So give your husband space. And the next thing is, don't try to force him to change. Very often the wife wants to force him to change. It's better to guide. My wife guides me many times. She'll ask me, now I notice when I give you some suggestions, sometimes you always tell me the difficulties. Let me ask your husband here. When your wife asks you a suggestion, give you a suggestion, let's do something. Do you very often easily will say, well, that's too difficult. It's too much money. Uh, no, uh, it, it's not good. Is it easy for you to say that? It's not easy. No, what I mean is, do you have a tendency to first say the difficulty? Yeah. Also for pastors too, when your member suggests something to you, can our church have this, can our church have that? And then the pastor generally, would the pastor generally say, oh, yes, I think about it. Thank you for your idea. Or would the pastor generally say, no, 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 we cannot do that, we cannot do that. Let me ask you, is it, do we have a tendency to say no to people? Yes, sometimes. Yes. So, my wife guide me to say, now, she wants, 
Like for instance, in our, on our uh, honeymoon. And then we were in Hawaii. And she said, let's go to the beach to take pictures. I said, well, to the beach, then the sand will get under the feet. And also it will get into the camera. And then, as she said, the pictures there are more romantic. So I, I, I did it. And afterwards, she said, how come when I suggest to go to the beach, you always think about the difficulties first and not the good things about it? And then other suggestions she had, I would think about the difficulties first. So, and then when she said that to me, she guided me to think. And then I realized that. And then I paid attention to it. And then I changed because I'm willing to change. But she did not force me. But many wives will force the husband to change. Now these are very important. It takes, we have to learn it and remember it too, okay? And then, wives, don't put your husband below you. Now many wives like to say this. You husband, you're not as smart as someone else's husband. And you cannot make money. You can do nothing good. And then when they think that if I do that, they do that, they would feel better. But actually, when you step on the husband, what happens is that he would turn away from you. So it's very important for men to be respected, to be honored. And then don't insist that he's wrong. For wives, don't insist that he's wrong. That if you want to guide him to change, guide him instead of telling him. Uh, uh, always pointing out the problem, okay? Okay, now another idea that helps the relationship. There is a bank of relationship, bank. Relationship bank. You have Liberian bank here, right? Yeah. Liberian bank. There is a relationship bank. Now what is this bank? Every time you do something nice to the person, then you deposit, it's like depositing money into the bank. Every time you're nice, you're kind, you do something good, you're depositing money into the bank. And every time you fight or quarrel or say something unpleasant, you're taking money out. Let me ask you, for the couples here, for the married people here, are you putting more money in or taking more money out? Do you put in more love or have fights and quarrels and disagreement? Which one do you have more? You put in more, that's good. How about the other ones? People have more disagreement. Huh? People have more disagreement. More disagreement. So disagreement will be taking money out, right? Now if the bank account, if your bank account is always drawing money, what will happen to the bank account? Yeah, no more money, right? So yeah, the account will close. So for many marriage, it's always withdrawing, always fighting, yelling. Have you seen marriage like that? Yeah. Have you seen relationship like that? Yeah. Every day, no happiness. Every day, have to do this, have to do that, and then he didn't do it, so anger. So that way, the relationship bank is bankrupt, okay? And then at a point, willing to forgive. Now many people, they will have a checklist. All the things my husband has done wrong, all these years. And many women have a tendency to remember better. And they can remember many of the faults of the husband. And so what happened is, this will ruin the relationship and make it hard to continue. So willing to forgive. And also willing to solve problems. Now many people, when they have problems, what do they do? They fight, they yell. Does it solve problems? No. no. But we try to find a way to resolve the problem. Find, try to find a way. Talk nicely together. Okay, and then five languages of love. Now write this down. These five languages of love. First, attentive time together or concentrated time. A time you concentrate on each other. Number one. Time you concentrate on each other. Number one. Number two. 
loving and positive words. Positive and loving words. Number three, gifts of love. These are very important. These five languages you have to remember. And from four, body contact. And number five, to serve the other person. Now these are ways we show love, yes? I'll say again, okay? First is time together, concentrated in each other, attentive to each other. Second, words of love and positive words. Gifts, gifts, words, what you say, words of love. And then gifts of love. And then number four, body contact. And then serving the other persons. Now these five languages are very important because this is what people see as love. And you want to do to the other person what you what the other person like. For most women, what they like is what? For most women, what they like is the time together. The time you attend to her. You listen to her. That's for most women, that's for sure number one. For men, what's the number one? Most men. Most men is body contact or service. Okay? And each person is different. And also, each of these have different ways to serve. For instance, for the wife, she thinks that when she does the bed and clear the house, that's serving the husband and making him happy. But the husband did not notice it. When he comes home, he did not notice it. But when the wife, when the wife, if the husband is interested in something, for instance, he's interested in tennis, and then the, and then the wife would help him in that, then the husband see that as action of love. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Most women see cleaning the house now. It's true, cleaning the house is good. Women like to be, generally like to be clean and tidy, things to be neat, and men generally don't pay attention to that. So when the, when the wife clean the house, she really want to make the husband feel good. But many men did not notice that. Have you noticed? They come home, they did not notice it, that you have done all this work. They just think this is normal. This is normal. So now it's an it's a action of love. But he doesn't see it that way. But something he likes, you do it for him, then he's very happy. Then he will see that as action of love. So you want to do something that the other person wants. For instance, for the wife, usually wives want you to be attentive, to listen. Now for each person it's different. It's good for you to go home and do it with your husband and your spouse. Then you put on a sheet of paper. Two lists. First list is what you think is the most important to you, what the other person does to you. One, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. What you want the other person to do. And then what you think of, what you think the other person like. Now first what you like. And then what does the other person like. And then, and then for your spouse, he also write down what he likes and what he thinks you like. And then see if it, you match. I did it with my wife. Actually, my wife read this book. And then we did it. And we guessed it all right. All correct. Because we knew each other. So we knew each other what we each other like. And then we can uh, know what the other person like. And I, I want to say again is, for each person, the way we want something, for instance, gifts. Now, in Hong Kong or in other places, wives like gifts of ornaments. Now, for men, they like gifts that has function. Women like gifts that has a meaning of love. I have given many gifts to my wife of earring, uh, bracelet, uh, and a necklace, and rings. All of them have, not, not rings, just one ring. Ring we just wear once. <laughs> and, then, and then they all have the hearts. 
Most of the gifts I give her all have the heart. Everywhere I go, I look for gifts that has the heart and then give to her. And she likes it. And, and then she made many gifts for me with her love. So we want something that the other person likes. For instance, for women to give to a man something practical, he would like. Something that he can use, he would like. To give to a woman, what she likes most is a gift that shows the relationship, that shows that you care about her, that, that you remember her. That's what she likes. Okay? So go home and do it. And this is something we do not only actually, not only with, um, not only with husband and wife, with other people too. The language of love is for all people. Now body contact for many people would be minimal. Sometimes it's shaking the hand, sometimes it's patting on the shoulder, but still it's a way of showing acceptance. And for husband and wife, now many men have a tendency to think body contact means sex, but the wife actually wants more comfort. That the husband want to touch her or hug her not to get sex but just to show love generally the wife likes that to show to show love okay and then the triangle theory of love triangle theory in this triangle okay the triangle has what one is passion passion p a s s i o n Number two, intimacy. How close these two persons are. Number three, commitment. C-O-M-M-I-T-M-E-N-T. -E now this is a healthy marriage life if it has all three. What is passion? Now usually people have passion when they first fall in love. They will dream about their person they want to see their person, they want to spend time, they want to hold each other's hands, they want to be together, that's passion. Number two is intimacy, that they share with each other, they talk with each other, they understand each other, they care about each other, they know each other. And number three, commitment, that I will not leave you, I will stay married to you, that you are my lifetime spouse. Now these three elements build up a healthy relationship. Let me tell you, what are some unhealthy relationships based on these three? There are marriages that just have the commitment. They get married, no, compassion, no passion and no intimacy. It's just eating together, sleeping together, giving, children, uh, giving birth to children. That's it. Just the commitment to get married. Now if a marriage if a relationship just has passion, they like each other, but no commitment, no, don't get married, no intimacy, they don't know each other, just, just uh, they see each other and very excited, that won't last long, right? And then the other one just has intimacy, but no commitment, then there is no sense of security. And also, no passion. Now, relationship without passion is like this. No feeling seeing the spouse. No happiness. When you see the spouse, they won't smile. Now, when you smile, when you see someone, that means you're happy. When you go home, you go home like this. Now, many people change the way they call the spouse when they get married. They will say instead, you know, I don't know how you call each other, you know, uh, before marriage. You might call her by name, but then after marriage, no more name. Mommy, where are you? Mommy, come out. Daddy, come out. <laughs> no more intimate name. Now, me and my wife, we have intimate names. Not our, not our real names, but we have nicknames. And I usually, I like to have many nicknames. I have many nicknames for her. I make up different nicknames. And I call her different nicknames. To sh and I... You know, when she sees me, she's, she really smiles a lot. She really smiles a lot. And I, I, uh, I smile too, but I don't smile as much as she does. And I want to learn to smile more. And she responds to my, anything I do, she's always happy. 
always smiling. She's a happy person. And I thank God for her. But it's true that men usually don't show the emotions that much. But I, I learned this to, to, to really appreciate her and like her and be happy. And I build up that passion. Now from some marriage, they say, we have nothing left now. We only have commitment, nothing else. How can we build that up? You build that up by thinking about the times when you were dating. What was special about that time? Can you rebuild that again? Can you remember and mention those times? Can you spend time talking together, walking together? Now do you here have this habit of husband and wife go walk together? Do the couples here have this habit? Taking a walk together here? Sometimes. Sometimes, huh? So I hope more of you will do that. But I know that this place, there are not too many beautiful gardens to walk in. <laughs> but even if there are not too many beautiful gardens, there are some places more better than others that don't have so much mud and uh, have more grass. <laughs> and. And my wife, when she think of dinner, she always think of a place where we can look at the beach, look at the ocean, and, and she knows that I like music or a place, but there was one place we went to and there was music. And, and because I, when I hear music, I really like it, I, my heart will follow the music. Wherever there's music, I will notice it, the first place. And I ask her, did you notice music here? And then she noticed. But she would not notice by herself. But for me, I walk to any place, a restaurant, any shopping center, when there is music, I can hear it right away. And I can tell what's being played. I know, I know the notes also. So that's how I am. And she knows that. She wants to make me happy. So I hope that, that you build up that passion by remembering the good things, the good times, and doing good things to him or her, and responding. When the other person does it, wow, thank you. You're so nice. Have you ever said this to your spouse? Have you ever shown emotion, happy emotion? I would like it very much. Let me tell you when I got married with my wife. When the pastor asks, do you want to take Timothy Yip as your husband? This is how she responds. Yes, I want to. <laughs> yes, I do. She, not, not, not so strong. She, yes, I want. Yes, I do. <laughs> she really has a lot of passion. And I hope you too build it up. Build it up by being nice. Always make the other person happy, okay? And also, very often this will help to, re, to say the words of vows, the vows of marriage again. You know, there are many times when I went to a place with an arch, there are flowers and an arch there, or hearts, I would say to my wife, will you marry me? <laughs> and then she said, yes, yes, yes. I said it to her many times. And then sometimes I walk with her, dun, 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 just to say to her again. And I'm going to Israel in July, and we will go to Galilee. There is one place, I will go to Jerusalem and Galilee, and Jordan also. And then, one place, the Cana, Cana. where Jesus had attended the wedding. wedding. There we will do our wedding again. Now, no, we don't necessarily yeah. dress up, but now she's trying to, you know, she, we have her, our wedding clothing. Now, we, our wedding is very special. We did not have the regular wedding. We went to Hawaii, just the two of us. And then we bought some Hawaiian clothing. And her hers was very tight. And she would, um, now it doesn't, it, she can still wear it, but it's too tight. So now she's working hard to reduce a little weight. And then she can wear that, that dress again, because it was tight, quite, kind of tight. 
she can still wear it now. And then I would, we would still wear the same clothing and then we go to Cana to have these pictures again and then say these vows again. This is how we can strengthen the vow. Strengthen that, yes, I want to love her as Christ loved the church. How much does Christ love the church? How much? So much is beyond any imagination. Have you known any man love their wife that much? No. No. So we want to love more, right? So, and then when you love more, then you have happy marriage. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then very important in marriage, build up listening. Now, men have problem listening. As I said yesterday, there was one man. A few times I kept saying what the wife said to, to him. Still he could not remember. So uh, this is an art to remember. To, to, re to listen and to remember what you just heard. And I hope we all, now this takes more time so I'm not going to talk about this. Let me see, what time is it? 1.20. 1.20. 2.21. 2.21. 1. 21. Okay. Okay, I'm going to finish this soon. Um, the awareness will is very helpful in communication in marriage. Awareness will. The awareness will have five parts. This helps your communication. I'm not going to go into depth into this. First one is I act. A-C-T. You can write it down. Awareness will, A-W-A-R-E-N-E-S-S, -E -S. awareness will. Number one, I act. Number two, I sense, S-E-N-S-E. -S -E. This helps communication, I sense. Number three, I think. Number four, I want. Number five, I feel, F-E-E-L. These five areas of areas of sharing about ourselves now many people talk when they talk they talk about someone else that is not sharing that's not sharing about ourselves to build a relationship now men you want to have women who likes to listen to you and talk with you you want to be able to communicate and to communicate these are the five areas very important i act what does that mean what I did in the past, what I am doing now, what I will do soon. For instance, many husbands, they go home. They won't say anything about what they did. And the wife asks him, what did you do? Oh, I just wanted to buy something. Okay, what did you buy? Oh, I buy uh, a can of food, okay? What kind of can? Oh, uh, tomato. So, he won't say much. It just the act is important to tell what I did, you know, the detail what we did. Because this would, this is basic, this is easy. Anyone can say it, say what we just did. And then I sense, sense means what I see, what I hear, what I feel on the body, what I smell, all these are sense. Now it's very important. For instance, I see that your eyes are more expression now than before. <laughs> And I feel happy about it. I see that your eyes are more lively now than before. I sense that. And we can tell people. For instance, I sense heat. I sense my heart is pounding when I'm talking to you. I feel, wow, I'm so excited, I'm sweating. So these are telling people how we are. When we describe an experience, we can say, Oh, I'm sweating, I'm excited, I'm, I have sweat coming out, I'm, I'm very hot. I think is what I believe or what we think of something. I think the church is like this, I think the pastor is like this, I think our church, our, our family is like this, I think I want to do this, I think uh, this is what I think about God. Now many people just share at most to the I think. And then I want and I feel. I feel it's most important. I want is this. What I'd like you to do. What I'd like that will happen to us. This is very helpful too. Now sometimes a couple argue with each other. 
And then finally, the husband says one thing. What do you like me to do? What do you want me to do? And then the wife is very happy. Oh, you ask me now. Okay, I want you to stay home more. But the wife never said, I want you to stay home more. I'd like you to stay home more. The wife can learn to say that. My wife says that to me a lot. I'd like you to do this. If you do this, I'm very happy. So when we say, I want this, not necessarily saying, I force you to do it, but I like you. For instance, I like you to have more expression. I like you to really love the Lord when you pray. So that's, says, I want. When I say this, then you understand my what I want. And then I feel, now I feel I told you the five, the six feelings. Glass, sad, mad, afraid, ashamed, and then hurts. It's good to share feelings. Because when you share feelings, people understand you. Now let me tell you, for instance, I told you many times about my wife, and I'm so happy about her. When you heard this, how does it make you, does it help you to understand me more? Yes. When I tell you how my heart is, how I care about you, when I feel hurt, when I heard that the people here are so poor, they don't have money for a marriage certificate, I feel bad about that. And so when you hear that, I feel hurt about that. How does it make you feel? How does it make you feel? Can you say it? Feel encouraged, okay? Very good. Now, some people cannot name their feelings. So we have to, there are lists of feelings. You can go on the internet and search, you know, lists of feelings. Excited, overwhelmed, happy. Now, many people just say happy, unhappy. I'm, uh, I'm zealous, I'm zealous to do it. I'm eager to do it. So there are different expressions that we need to learn to express our feelings. And then when people express the feelings, let me ask you, has your husband expressed his feelings to you? Any wives here that you heard your husband express your feeling? Can you raise your hand? Any wives here that your husband will talk about their feelings sometimes? Can you raise your hand? Okay, very good. Very good, okay, that's very good. How about the other wives? How many wives are here? How many people who are married? <laughs> women, women. How many women are married? Just one, two. Three, four, okay. So does your husband tell you their feelings? And how do you feel about that? What did she, what did she say? Feeling she be happy. Okay. Bad now, feeling. what I want to say is, bad feelings should be said too, but in a way not to explode. Now, if you say I'm angry, that's not the right way. But if you say when I see this happen, I feel angry. It's okay to tell the feelings so that the other person can manage it together, okay? Now, I want to just say one more thing, and then I'll stop. To manage conflicts, because in marriage it's very important to manage conflicts. First, many people think that they believe in many lies that cause conflicts. Now, let me say this, I'm sorry. Just now when I talk about the five things in the awareness wheel, I encourage you to express more of these five areas. It will help people to understand you. And then you can write it down and then, and then exercise it. Do it with your friends and your spouse. Do it with the church members to get used to sharing. I'm used to it, so that when people talk, I know what they're talking about. I know they're talking about their feelings or thinking or what they want. I can tell it right away because I'm used to that. So this is something for us to practice. Okay, now, conflict management. Many people have conflicts because they believe these lies. One lie is, the one who is louder will have victory. Do many people believe in this? The one who talks the loudest has victory. 
Is it true? Yes. Many people believe this. But is this a truth? No. No, it is not. It's false. Actually, the one who is loud, he has no friends. He talks too loudly all the time, no friends. And then people will say, if I, if I argue and win the argument, then I'm the winner. Is that true? No. Not necessarily true, but people want to argue. So people believe in many lies. And a liar is, if he's wrong, then I should be angry. Is this true or not? Is this right or not? If he's wrong, I should be angry. Is this right or not? This is wrong. We should not be angry, but we should manage it and try to solve it. Okay? And another lie, he should satisfy my needs. He should satisfy my needs. This is what causes many marriage problems. He has to do everything. She has to do everything. This what I want, she has to satisfy. Okay? Now, when we manage problems first, calm down and don't accuse. Now these are the ways. I'm telling you the ways now, you can write down. How to manage the problem? First, calm down and listen. Listen instead of accuse. Listen to the feeling and the needs of their person. And keep the atmosphere peaceful. Don't have a argumentative atmosphere, a fighting atmosphere. Can you tell atmosphere? When you're at home with your spouse, how is the atmosphere? Is it peaceful or tense or excited? When I'm with my wife, it's peaceful and happy and excited. But some couples, when I do marriage counseling, I find that it's very tense because they have all negative feelings. So we want to keep it peaceful and loving and caring. So it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. I want to say this, before you marry someone, make sure this someone has love and you have love also. If the person doesn't have love, even if he has many good things, he doesn't want to bless other people, he will not be a good spouse. And then, both of both spouses, both persons, this could be spouse or anyone. Try to find what is the problem. Where is the problem? Find out the key problem. Find out where the problem is. And then, peacefully say, how can I solve it? How can we solve it? What can we do? And then, evaluate. Evaluate whether we have solved the problem and then how we can improve. Now there is one teaching called PIE, P-I-E, can you write down P means praying and planning. P is praying and planning. Write this down, it's important. PIE is very important, this teaching is very important. Pray and plan. Two is I, is implement. I-M-P-L-E-M-E-N-T. I-M-P-L-E-M-E-N-T -E -E means put it in action. So you pray and plan something and then put it in action. And then E, E is evaluation. E-V-A-L-U-A-T-I-O-N. E-V-A-L-U-A-T-I-O-N, evaluation. This is the way to improve. You pray and plan. For instance, your church has a problem. You pray and plan how to fix it. Or marriage has a problem. You pray and plan. And then you implement. You put it in action. And then you evaluate. And then it needs improvement. You pray and plan again. You keep going in circle so that you improve more and more so that the situation will be corrected. So when there are conflicts, instead of arguing, most people argue, fight, yell, angry. But the best is to listen and try to find a solution. And then things can be solved. So for husband and wife, I encourage you to talk with each other. What are some problems? How can we build it up? Uh, how can we solve it? And also, how can we build up the relationship? First build up the relationship. How to build up the relationship. And how to resolve some problems. Okay, any questions related to this? Any questions related to this? Okay, now, before we pray, I want to say this. You have to hand in your 
uh, assignment today. And now after this break time, how many people still need time to write? How many people still need time to rewrite? Now if you gave it to me today, I didn't have a chance to read it, and you know the answer is wrong, then you should write rewrite it. If you already had it in, you know it's wrong, then you rewrite it. Do you need time to do it? Yeah. And then do you want me to continue to teach? Until four and then four and five you work on it, or do you want to work on it now? After teaching, huh? give us time to work on it. The, continue to teach until four. But we have a break time now. We have a break time, okay? Okay, let's have a prayer. Oh Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us male and female, and each has different characteristics. And we all function well. We all can accomplish what God wants us to do. God has given men the ability to plan many things and accomplish many things. And given women the ability to relate and build up relationship. Lord, we want to make the best use of these gifts that you have given to male and female so that we can build up relationship instead of tearing down. But very often because of sin, we have torn down relationship and also many people didn't know where the problem is and keep complaining and keep being angry and it keep breaking up the relationship. Lord, help us to repent. Lord Jesus, help each one of us repent. How we have not loved how we have not listened, how we have hurt each other. Please forgive us and wash us clean with the blood of Jesus and help us to grow in these relationships. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.